baby so we do a strobe light party lights disco lights karaoke machine for our 500 sub party or we could I need something that's not going to make me lose my finger sh- blind <laughs> Welcome back, Slayers. Here's a tips and tricks from Nebaduck on what you should know before the closed alpha. And I'm going to go into a few details as well. Uh, don't forget we have a Dauntless Key giveaway going on. To enter, just make sure you are subscribed. Like and comment on any videos that I have posted from the 18th to the 30th. Um, you can have one entry per video. So just make sure you tag all the videos. That way you get your um, possibilities of winning the beta key up. Um, and so here we go. Let's get right into this and knock some information out for you guys get you prepared for that closed beta All right, the video is going to mainly focus on the UI and how to navigate Ramsgate where Ramsgate is your central hub It's kind of where you queue up for everything It's where you craft and do all your miscellaneous tasks find quests stuff like that Keep in mind. This is alpha. There could be improvements and changes when the alpha goes live um, even on September 1st. All right, sorry. This is beta, not alpha. So things could change between now and September 1st. All right, let's get into this. All right, so first off, you're going to have, um, you're going to zone into this first area right here. You're going to be standing over where that Askren guy is. You're going to be facing this way. So you're going to walk in here. Um, you are going to come over to here. And then these little bulletin boards are where you get your your um, hunts. So this is how you queue up to go kill a behemoth. Um, they are not specifically in a easiest to hardest order. Um, so for like right here, this is going to pit me against a Nasher and a Rogue Nasher. Rogue, anytime you see Rogue in the name, that's kind of the preparatory boss or preparatory behemoth if that even makes sense in that words i think you get what i'm trying to get at here um anytime there's a rogue name on there like the rogue nasher rogue shrike these are going to be easier than the official nasher or the official shrike see there's no abbreviation to his name so that'll give you an idea and then they have you can go to the next level which is where is it the rage tail so then they these little modifiers before the name are going to indicate that the boss you're fighting is getting a little bit stronger and so moon reaver shrike again a little bit stronger than the shrike we viewed up here um well shot so i haven't got so basically my progression is right about here ember main char hog um these are all kind of fairly close to the same difficulty and um yeah so and then you also have these so like the hunt for sheltered frontier hunting randomly chosen behemoth including nasher shrikes cool shots scraves Rogue Embermane, Rogue Cherogs, and Rogue Trask on a resource-rich uh, island. So there'll be a boss there, but a lot of people just go to these islands because they'll have extra um, extra resources you can farm. And I'm going to um, do a tips and tricks video on the hunts as well. Uh, so, yeah, so you got this where you can go to just farm materials, and it's going to give you a random boss. All right, so that's your bulletin boards. There are several of these around the whole entire town. The next thing is when you kill a boss, you're going to get this little um, core. And I guess I did this backwards, but you're going to get a core. And when you get the core, it's going to have um, materials in it. So there's two kinds of tor- cores. There's a, um, a core that gives you um, cosmetics. Um, so stuff like this. They'll drop different flares and you can collect all these different color flares. You can collect different symbols. Um, And these flares you just shoot up in the air when you're near a boss so people know where you're at Um, So it's pretty cool. Um, So you can customize what you're doing and hopefully they'll monetize this and actually make it So you can submit art for a flare. It would be very cool I could do a duck one maybe pay five ten bucks for him to make it or maybe even more I mean it'd be kind of cool to see my um, My logo in the game. So I think anybody would actually like that um, and then also, um, yeah, so that's that's your cosmetics right there. So so far, um, I'm assuming they're gonna have they're gonna have ways where you can transmog your gear to make it look like other sets that you like. Um, you can take this, you can customize the die. 
so you can change the color and look of the um, gear that you're wearing. So if you want to be like a, a blue, you hit accept. Let me just kind of go through all of them and then hit customize die. Oh, sometimes it glitches out there. There we go. Customize die and we want blue. Remember, this is alpha, so everything is going to change and they're going to slowly improve the game. And they're really working with the community a lot to find out what they want and how they can get there to make it um, a much better play playing session for people. So I am enjoying it a lot and the feedback that they uh, people are giving, they're actually using, which is pretty cool. So that's how you customize your gear. Um, and again, they're gonna they're they're saying they're gonna monetize more cosmetic end, and we'll go from there. I will talk about the um, the premium uh, subscription and stuff like that as soon as I get a little bit more details. Um, there's a lot of people that have already done the what I would say already, um, so I'm gonna kind of leave it there. All right, the next thing I want to talk about is if you notice up at the top of the screen, there's a compass. And on that compass, it's got like little hashtags. Those little hashtags kind of show you the direction that stuff are in. If I had a quest, which unfortunately I wish I did, um, you would actually see an exclamation point if there was a quest to pick up. And you would see a, a yellow question mark if there was a quest to turn in. Kind of like with any MMO that you play, um, you pick up the exclamation points, you turn them back in when they're question marks. So it's pretty straightforward. That look in your eye. If this guy had a quest, <clears throat> I'd be able to click that. He doesn't. Um, crafting is right here and this guy is the guy who crafts potions and potions are pretty cool um, so you can craft different ones when you first start you can craft a healing potion um, you get turtle grass from gathering again I'll show you that on the uh, on the island and I'll break that video up into um, gathering resources and kind of where you get them and also I'll break that up into um, where uh, in the boss fight as well and the uh, rewards you get from that um, just to keep things short all right so you got healing potion major healing potion um, you can make you can craft a healing pylon and you craft a bunch of those and you can put that down as your potion good, so good. I'm actually gonna go and switch that out all right so I'm gonna switch my healing pylon or potion for actually is it offensive Stamina potion, preserve potion. No, it's defensive. Maybe team resistance, shock, revive, physical healing pile. Oh wow, that's a defensive potion. So I can bring two of those into a fight, and I can plop those down under the ground. Um, again, I change my flare. This right here, um, you can craft different things. So right now I have equipped uh, air resource spotter. So if I um, sent, uh, if I click this and use this in a um, in the instance in the island on the hunt um, it will pop up a flare and that flare will mark with these little leaves where all the resources is so you tend not to forget it um, you can drop a healing pack uh, which basically is, um, drops supplies that contain healing health packs so it's it's not a bad thing to do um, as well if you've got those crafted um, and this is basically the UI so this is where I change my weapons um, you click on the different weapons here as you can see, I've been using swords and chain blades mostly. My chain blade is the highest weapon uh, dealing, uh, highest damage dealing weapon. Um, regular chain blades um, and regular weapons are going to have uh, a base stat or a base attribute, which is this one has cutting power. So does the sword. And then if we go to axes, also cutting power. But then we go to hammers and it's cutting power as well. So, and then they usually have raw elemental damage. And then this is just your extra attacks that do raw elemental damage. But if you look at my chain blades and you look at my best weapon here, this one has shock power. So this shock power, when I use the ability that applies it, it will um, really hit the um, creature all over. So, and I'll go into detail more when we do the... Um, when we do the fight where we fight a behemoth. All right, let's get up here real quick. So, all right, so you kind of go up to the stairs around to the right and you got a few more crafters. Over here directly to the right is your, Backslash, stab, um, Foreman weapons. Do it your weaponsmith. So you come to him, you click on the weapon you want to make 
and then you basically look at what you need to gather and then it tells you where you find this stuff too it says uncommon catalyst uh -huh, collected on tempest islands and the monstrous verge um, aether glass common from raw arcanite found in islands in the sheltered frontier and dull eye tooth stuff like that i'll go over where to get most of this stuff and give you there's actually a spreadsheet a community spreadsheet out there and it'll be linked in the description below so if you're having a hard time finding where something drops you can go to that spreadsheet and find out what zone um, you need to be farming as far as the raw materials or what bosses you need to kill to get it over here it tells you the power it'll be when you start crafting it i think i've already crafted one of these let's find one that i haven't like so the drask one Right now, if I went out and got two more shot glass, I could make this weapon, and it would upgrade to 250 power, and I think right now it's like 115, so it's a huge upgrade if I can go find two shot glasses. Um, and that was pretty much a pain in the butt trying to find. All right, so that's how you navigate that, that screen right there. And then over here is your armor vendor. The armor vendor crafting again the nice thing about this and I'm, I'm assuming they'll add this to the other the weapon vendor is you can actually see as you're upgrading the gear so here's what it is at tier zero 34 resistances and then it gives you the extra stats and i'll also link a community spreadsheet down below that has descriptions on these so you can see them a little bit clearer um, and they're getting better at adding what they do but these are the ones i have right now so it reduces the stamina cost of evade by 20%, increases the window of vulnerability during evade by 15%. Beacon aspects, um, allies within five meters receive 5% of your resistances, increases the range of the affected uh, effect by 2.5. And then I'm on this one right here, increases the resistance allies receive by 7.5. Now, these are the stats that the item that you would craft would have, but unfortunately they don't tell you what it is until you equip it. So again, I will link that um, resource down below. It's still a work in progress. Um, he might be done with it and not finish it, but as of right now, it looks like he's still working on it. Um, so you got tier zero, which is just crafting that basic piece. Then you go to tier one. Uh, let's just craft one so we show you. Hold that down, craft it. Kind of exciting. And then you go to, all right, so I don't have the materials to Think tier two or oh, what happened here hmm that's weird all right so let's go back and see what's wrong here wasn't that the one I did okay more details all right so this shows me what it's gonna take to make those now these ones I don't have all the materials for so it shows me what I'm missing so the rage scale so and that drops if you see a common drop from the body of a rage tail so I need to go find a behemoth, there's no behemoth named Rage Tail. That's a modifier, so the Rage Tail Nasher, um, that piece would drop off him. But to give you an idea, if I were to craft this, the resistances would, I'd go down by six resistance. If I got all the way to the top tier, um, my resistance would be 53, which is 13 um, points higher in resistances than, um, than the gear that I'm wearing now. And then, but I would lose the quick aspect and the beacon aspect, but I would gain berserk aspect and rage aspect. Berserk, if I remember, yeah, there we go. So gain 0.1% offensive power for each 1% health missing. And then rage is increase your damage by 8% when the behemoth is enraged. So that's the bonuses that I would get. So if I'm low health, I would gain extra damage. And then if I, um, when the boss does get enraged, I definitely want to be on the boss attacking him because I would gain more um, damage that way too. So, and there's a bunch of different ones of these. Um, there's some that increase um, your cool, uh, decrease your cooldowns on items and stuff like that. Increases your healing from AOE stuff. All right, so if you notice in this area, you have another core cracker there and you have another bulletin board right over there. So you have them all over the place. All right, so directly to the left of the um, I trust you know your way around um, your armor is the crafter that does the lantern. And basically what you do is you queue it up, you hit craft, and then what it does oh, is it makes your walls. lantern, which is in your, um, which is your actually your, uh, one of your abilities. Here we go, I'll show you. So your lantern's right here. And the lantern I currently have gives me 45 resistance 
and when it's activated, nearby team members for a short time get healed. All right, so there's different ones. There's ones that give you um, stamina back uh, for your dodge rolls and stuff like that. And then you just got all these different ones down here. So heals, heals, heals. This one cleanses all negative effects. So say if you get uh, frozen in place, you can pop that. Um, now remember, these charge over time. And again, when I get into the boss fight, I'll be calling out what's going on so you get an idea of how the boss fights go. Um, and so from there, you got more vendors over here. Again, you got a couple more crackers there. And then down around the corner, kind of out of the way, it would be nice if sooner or later they release just like a, a mini map that you can bring up, just so you can find these a little bit better before you know where they are. But really, it doesn't take very long to find out because if you follow the quest line, just pay attention at the beginning. You. All right, so airdrops. So right now, um, if I want to airdrop, okay, so this is the airship resource detector. So this is the one that lets me know where the um, resources are on the map. And then healing pack. I can make two more of those. So I'm going to just craft those. And then that gives me two more. Alright, so that's the main vendors um, that you're going to be using. So feel free to leave a comment down below. And don't forget to like, uh, like the video as well to make sure you enter the contest for the Dauntless Key giveaway. Also check out my other videos. Um, I'm going to be releasing just some different stuff to, to the channel. Uh, but I'm going to try to pump out some Dauntless stuff so the people getting ready for the um, closed uh, beta will be ready and have some clue what they're doing when they get in there. All right, and that's it for me. Talk to you later. What'd you say? I'm not okay. What'd you say, Austin? What? I know you heard me. What'd you say? I said simple geometry. What?